Hey there, Nomies! What's going on? Boy, you are in for a treat today. At least I think so. You want to know why? Because this right now in South Central Alaska is my favoriteest time of year. It's midsummer. The salmon are running in the streams, the berries are growing on the bushes, the rains are coming, which makes the mushrooms a poppin'. Let's do a catch, clean, and cook on the Bolete Mushroom. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> Alright, Nomi, there's only a couple things we're gonna need for this excavation. Something to hold mushrooms in. I like using paper bags. Baskets work really well. Just something that you're not stacking too many on top so they don't squish each other too bad. Other thing you're gonna need? Something to pick and clean with. Nice sharp blade. I like these because you can replace these blades easy. You can make them long, you can make them short, you can cut them off, whatever. I like it. And if you're not sure exactly what you're looking for and you haven't made an appointment to come hang out with me for an afternoon looking for mushrooms, which you can do, I highly recommend getting one of those. Get a book that you like. It's got nice pictures in it to help you identify what you're looking for. Now this is a big book. This is mushrooms basically everywhere in the United States and Canada and all kinds of places around the world. This is a little big for many people. Find something regional. We're in Alaska. Alaska mushrooms. Look at that. All right, we gotta get. All right, Nomi, so we're losing daylight, so we better get a moving and a grooving. I got some spots that have been producing pretty good over the last three, four, five days. We've been eating a lot of mushrooms. We got some, a bunch in the dehydrator. Time to go get some more. Load it up. All right, Nomi. We are off, and I'm going to be just be driving slow along the road here because these particular mushrooms we're looking for that are coming up right now, they grow along the roadsides, paths, anywhere mankind has made a cut through the woods and disturbed the ground. And uh, we're not sure if we're going to see any when we're going to where we're going to definitely get some, but uh can't find them if you don't look so let's look give me a hand will you keep your eyes peeled we're gonna start moving ready guys did you know that the spores from the bolete mushroom will travel up to a half a mile let's try down this one once that baby spore finds a home, it takes about 10 to 15 years to produce enough mycelium in the bed to get more mushrooms. Did you see it? Did you see it? I did. Let's go check it out. What do we have over here? Uh-huh. A beautiful lemon bolete. And there's more. Ooh, I wonder what this is. Well, that is a aspen bowl. They're edible, but some people get upset tummies from them, so I avoid them. Let's see what else we can find. A few more lemons, yeah. Oh, these will be nice. Nice and fresh. That's what you're looking for, people. That one, see, it's got a few little slug holes in it. But as long as it ain't got worms, it's good. And another. Oh, this one's a little spent. You can tell by the dark in color compared to the bright yellow. That's a little wormy. I'd avoid these. 
not worth cleaning. I'm actually really hungry. Another little boat over there. Man, this patch ain't doing too bad. A few fly agars over there. Unless you're a shaman. Don't eat those either. They're pretty to look at though. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. See this? Right along the trail, right along the roadside. Now, I wouldn't do this in areas with heavy traffic, but uh, mainly because of pollutants. But check these out. Oh my goodness, are they not gorgeous? That's what you want, people. They're even more gorgeous in your tummy. Woohoo! Whoa, walk along here a little bit more. Oh, because I spot another one. Spot another one. I should have brought the bag. There she is. Uh -huh. Look at all them lemon bleeds. And a gorgeous agar. Aren't they beautiful? Ha! Some more back in the woods there. Alright. I got. I need to get, yeah, I gotta do something. But I'm on the. I'm on them. I'm on them, I'm on them folks. That. My lovelies is a prized King Bolete. Oh, yeah. And another. All right, my hands are full. On to the next match. Here we go. The largest living organism on Earth is a bed of mycelium. Located in Oregon, this mycelium bed is guesstimated at 3.5 square miles. You see him? Right there. Agars. Ooh, but I see a lemon. Three and a half square miles, people! That's freaking huge! Nice, fresh little lemon. Come to know me. <laughs> Beautiful. I got the agar I spotted. There's another one over there. Now I've been picking in this spot. And these are some of the ones I left. Because you never want to pick everything in one area. But if you do, I'll show you what to do to help them along this one. Slug had a yummy meal on. And uh, it's a little soggy and wormy. So, one thing I like to do is I'll take these and I'll try to break them up. Throw them on the ground. Make sure I walk them. Because if you get all that stuff on your feet, those are where you walk. Mm, mushrooms can grow. That's how we do it. All right, let's move along. I think this spot is flushed out. Ooh, wonder where that goes. Only the animals knows. We'll have to go check it out. Maybe not this trip, because we're on a mission. Oh, we're gonna shut her down for this one. Cause uh, this whole area along here, both sides of the roads, I've been doing really good. In fact, I see some over there right now. The mushroom eye is on. All right, let's go see what I saw. Let's go pick something. Whoa. Look at them high bush cranberries. Aren't they gorgeous? But they will make you pucker. I know I saw something. I thought I saw something. If you see it, let me know. But I could have been mistooken. Oh, 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 oh. 
Oh, a little saber stalk. Again, another one of those ones you want to avoid. I'm going to take this with us, and I'll show you the things to look for in characteristics. I know a lot of people that eat these, they eat them regularly, and it doesn't do anything. Other people, they eat them, they get tummy ache. Other people, they eat them for a little while, and then they'll get a tummy ache. So it's, you know, hit and miss. Depends on your tummy, I guess. Easily spotted the bigger they get, because it's a beautiful pancake-shaped top. And this is actually about a medium-sized one as they go. But they are beautiful. Oh, here come the skeeters. Keep moving. Keep moving. I'm taking a bag this time. There we go. They do go a little ways up in the woods. Oh, look at these beauties. Wow. Just. Wow. This area, I've been doing well. I've been leaving some. Those are spent lemon bolites. But we got some fresh ones popping up right here. Nomies. We we're eating good in the Nomi hood. Oh, more. <sighs> that one's a little wormy. Look at that little beetle RV run for the hills. He knows what's going on. Most of your critters vacate the premises as soon as you pick the mushroom. Save some of it. Oh, you're too far gone. And you'll notice the white all over them. That's the mycelium taking over. So, what I'd like to do, ooh, that's mushy, is uh, spread it around. Spread it low, like I like to say. Another little beauty. You know, as I'm showing you guys this and what I do, I'm trying to start avoid using the term winter food supply. There's a reason for that. Because yes, this is food for the winter. But here in Alaska, when things come up, you actually collect them. Oh, there's more. You actually collect for almost a year until they pop up again. So this is actually our food supply, not just winter, spring and summer, until these things pop up again next year. So we gotta get them while they're hot. Ain't that beautiful? Oh, here's a little patch. I missed the other day, but so the slugs got to them. They gotta eat two people. Oh. for nature. Keep looking. Uh -huh. It's always good to go back and forth up and down the road. Because like when I'm looking, I'm looking on this angle. So sometimes you can only see stuff once you look back. I went this way and I didn't see these over here. So I came back the other way. There's a couple. There they are. That's some curry beauties. He's getting a snack. Leave him be. Oh yeah. See that's a little warmed out. You get your Maggie toes in there. Yuck. Don't eat those. Well. Unless you need some protein. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here's where we started. Drop these off. Oop, fall on the ground.
Sometimes you gotta look close because they're growing, but they won't pop completely through the vegetation. Where I was looking the other day, there was a good bunch of lingonberries. So that's gonna be a good harvest. Man, if you ain't tried lingonberries yet, ooh. <gasps> Pretty. Can look at these all day. Now these are mushroom, but you can process and are edible. And I know there are some Russians that use them for something. I can't remember what. But yeah. But, uh, yeah. Check out these eggers. I'm looking at agars. I see one back in the woods. Not an agar. Not a thing. Oh. A big one that's been spent. Look more mushrooms, baby. What do we got back here? What do we got back here? Oh. Old saber stalk. He may be come back here for that. Now you notice I did go back in the woods a little bit, so you'll find them, you know, within that distance of the road. You probably won't find them up on the hillside. There's other mushrooms that are coming up for that. And, uh, yeah. Oh, found another patch. Oh, there's a good one here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice and fresh. So are the skeeter bites. See, like I was saying, they, sometimes it takes them a day or two to bust up. The problem is if they haven't busted up soon enough, the worms will really get in there. Let's see if this one's still good. It might just be coming up. Oh, it's perfect. Beautiful. A little slug damage. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Yeah, more. Alright, there's one. Looks pretty look I'm sorry. Looks pretty good, but it's super soft. So I'm gonna leave that one. This one here is the same way. Spread the love. These big ones. Yeah, see, if I was really hungry, like the first day I went out picking, I was keeping these and saving what I could, but I got so many now that spread the love. The look at these. You know, it's amazing the different shapes and configurations and things mushrooms will grow around. But you know what these are? Ladies. And germies. Uh, oh, it's. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get <laughs> Is that not freaking cool? Look at that little beauty hiding. Thanks, Pete. Ah. That, I do believe, we'll look it up when we get back to the gnomestead, is a pepper bolete. Very spicy, in a way. I don't like them. See these same spots I've been coming back to? These are the ones I left. They're still producing. Four days later. I've been coming about, out about every other day. Give them a chance to pop up. Unless it rains. If it rains, you might as well wait a day and a half, two days, for the sun to come out. Because these things get extremely wet and mushy. Hard to process. I need to go grab my bag. Because I got piles going. 
Remember I said I was gonna bring a bag? I did, and I promptly left it behind. Where are you, pile of mushrooms in all a bag? Ha! There it is. Big agar patch. Come with me to my little cave. Always look. Keep an eye out. Dinner in the woods. How do I know it's the woods? Freaking trees everywhere. Duh. This stretch of road never fails me. I'd like to find some more kings. Keep an eye out, nomies. Where there's one, there's got to be more. Ooh. Ta da! Alright, tell you what. I've been finding some good ones. I showed you pretty good. Oh, there's even more. I need to put this camera down and get to picking. Because this is taking three times as long. Not that I don't love hanging out with you guys, but mushrooms to pick. We'll be back. All right, one more real quick, just because it's by the lingonberries. Earlier I was telling you about lingonberries. There they are right there. They will not be ready to pick yet. You see how that's got a white spot on the bottom? Not ripe yet. Very deceiving, because you can't see it. There you go. But soon, they'll be ready for picking and preserving. Till then. Alright, I'm really turning this thing off now. They're hiding. Underneath all this stuff. You see them? Trying to hide from me. Come to me, my little lovelies. Well, there's some fresh ones. See if I can get to them. Without killing myself, I think I can get those. Ooh, man, I wish I could get up there to get those. I might be able to over here. I can do this without killing myself. Almost there. I can almost reach you. Crocs, approved footwear for hillside mushroom hunting. Not. Alright, how do I get those? I gotta get up here. Cause it's worth getting up there. Check it out there all over. I better grab the bag. Okay, I'm thinking. You since there's brush over there, I got something to grab onto. And there's mushrooms to pick along the way. I don't know if you can see them, but I can. We gotta get up there because there's a bunch of them up there. Alright, if you don't hear from me, well, you won't get this message. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? Huh, no idea. Oh. Anything else while we're up here? Alright, make our way across. <laughs> it's worth the climb. Alright, let's get picking. Well, there you go. Battery's at 7%. We got our mushrooms. Now we gotta work our way back down the hill. That's pretty steep. But, when you got your crocs, uh oh, they're not in four wheel drive. Better to fix that. Alright, we made it. We're alive. Head back to the vehicle. Yeah, that's a good little score. That's about two and a half, three pounds of mushrooms. Short little jaunt. Didn't take very long. About 15, 20 minutes. Getting dark. Now's the fun part. Processing. Nomies. We got some mushrooms to clean. Stand by. Over there on the stove, I got some tea staying warm. 
Well, guys, it got dark 30 on us, but that ain't gonna stop us because these gotta be cleaned and put into the dehydrator or cooked into something. Um, otherwise, the worms are gonna take over. If there's any worms in there, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. <sighs> okay, put that over there. I think what I'm gonna do first here is I'm going to sort these out, see which ones are good, which ones are eh, get a weight on them, and then we'll uh, take a real good look at them and uh, do some identification. You know what? I forgot to tell everybody what we're gonna need. So, besides the mushrooms and tea, we need one of these. We're gonna need a bowl. Scale the weight out. Now, one of these right here. These little brushes, they come in handy. Sometimes a big one. Got a piece of cardboard I like cutting on. And something to put scraps in. Let's clear all this up. Get her done. Okay, guys, I forgot to tell you real quick before we get going. I like these little tiny cheapo brushes. I don't know if you can see they're not, they cost like 50 cents, 25 cents. But they're a little loose. And I like a stiffer bristle. That's all I'm gonna do. Put about half of them off. Yeah, you know that's a little bit stiffer. That's for cleaning mushrooms. Never wash your mushrooms, never. All right, guys, we've been busy. Check that out. Whew. We're gonna weigh these up in a minute. I wanted to show you real quick how to clean these things and how to identify these things because we've got three different varieties of bolites here. One of them might make your tummy sick. It ain't gonna kill you, don't worry about it, but it may give you them Hershey's. No! You don't want that. A lot of people eat them and they're just fine. We're going to tell you how to identify them, which one's good, which one's bad, um, how to clean these things up and process them. When we're processing them, we're cutting them nice and thin. We're going to put them in the dehydrator slash, slash smoker, get them nice and dry, and that way when they are dry, we can put them in jars, and we'll have them for, uh, well, like we were talking about earlier. Till next year when they come around, hopefully, mostly. Real quick, identification here on these bolites. Now these I did not clean up yet. I'll clean them up here in a little bit. Let's see which is which here. Because one of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. How does that tune go? All right, guys, we were talking about these out in the field here. The lemon bolete. Um, yeah, the reason there's, they call them lemon. See how yellow they are? I'll show you here when they're cleaned up. This is a perfect one right here. It's got a little bit of dirt on it, but that'll brush off. But man, this is how you want them. Perfect, delicious ready to go in the frying pan. Minus a little dirt. And these right here are our prized possessions. Yeehaw! The King Bolites. Mm-hmm. 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 right, let's see how we can figure out which one is which on these. Like we were saying before, lemon bolete. All of your bolites are gonna have a sponge or a polypore. The polypore is a good identification on whether it's a bolete or not. Like your button mushrooms you get out of the store, a lot of your other mushrooms, your oysters and stuff like that, they'll have gills. You know the difference. But this is a polypore. And that is the sponge. So, nice straight stalk, yellow, yellow sponge, tannish top, kind of looks like a pancake, kind of purdy. This one right here is our prized, prized King Bolit. Ain't it beautiful? Looks good enough to eat. Yum. How do we know? Well, if you look at it, see how that's a nice straight stalk? This one's all bulbous. That's your first identifier. Then, you also have your polypores, and they're nice and white. Stalk is woody kind of tannish goes into the white this one right here <laughs> this is a prime eater right here great size these things get super huge 
So when they get that big, they're not very good to eat because they get real woody and hollow and yeah, not much good. But this right here, it's perfect. Again, on the bulbous side, not as bulbous as this one, but the same kind. But you got, since it's a little bit older, probably by about a day compared to this one. This one came up today. This one probably came up yesterday or the day before. It's a little yellowish. But it's the same mushroom, just a little bit bigger. Now these two I found, which is really cool. I thought it was one. And it kind of is one. Because they grew up like that. But check that out. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, last but not least. A lot of people pick these. A lot of people eat these. This is what I call a saber stalk. Or an aspen bolete. They get really large. They'll get really super, super big. Beautiful round top, that color. But your main identifier is your black and white stalk. And on any mushroom that you're not sure about eating and whether to try, this is a great test. Okay. Earlier, probably about a half an hour ago, I went and I scored this. See how that's dark? Basically what I did, you can do this out in the field. All you gotta do is make a line, like that. And if it turns blue, black, or very, very dark like that, basically what you're looking for, you're looking for a real dark blue color. In fact, you can see it on here. You see how the mycelium is turning blue? Hopefully the camera's picking that up. But that's the bruising and basically when that's that bruising happens this thing will start changing colors in fact we'll set this aside for a second and take a look at it here in a minute but you'll see see that already yeah if it's blue or brown it'll make you blue or brown we'll set this aside like I said um, lots of people eat them they love them just fine some people eat them if you eat too many it will make you sick me I just don't even bother they're not worth it they're not that good so Okay, cleaning these things. These little babies right here, since this is a catch, clean, and cook, we're going to set these aside and uh, clean them up better tomorrow, right before we cook them. Um, if you keep them whole, the holer you keep them, and you can put them in the refrigerator, just as long as they're in a cool, dry place, they'll keep overnight, maybe a day and a half, but I like to process them as fast as possible, and we'll show you why here in a minute, because we got some here that, well, they're a little iffy. There's still good mushroom in there, but we'll show you what to look for. Oh, check that out. Do you know what did that? Can you see the tooth marks? Can you guess? Can you? Can you? Anyway, so we'll clean these up too because we can save some of that. And we'll show you what we do with that. Alright folks, basically what you want to accomplish is this right here. <laughs> They're magnets for dirt. Um, so even if you clean them up real good, they will attract more dirt. But, uh, yeah, that's what we're out to achieve right here. This right here is a prime specimen. What I like to do first is I'll grab it like this and I'll brush all this dirt off of it. Before it gets all over the cap. And then I'll work my way down. That way I don't pick up too much dirt on my fingers. And, uh, yeah, just brush it off. It's clean dirt. And then I'll go through here and I'll just peel it. Now you'll see this one right here. How nice and white it is inside. Okay. Just peel it down like that. Get the dirt off. Make sure you save all this stuff. I got a box down here or a bag somewhere with all these scraps in there. Do not throw this stuff away. Don't put it in your compost. I'll tell you why here in a little while. Stick around. And while you are, since I'm doing all this, how about hitting that subscribe button? Could you, would you? If I asked you? While I'm cleaning the mushrooms here? Hmm? 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 Basically just peel this down. Oh, here's another good way to identify the stalks. On these, you see how they have a crook? Most of them will have a crook. 
That's because they generally are growing out of the hillside. Well, you saw that. I almost fell down that hillside. Huh? Mm -hmm. The things I do for you people. Could you hit the like button? All right, this right here. Just trim your dirt off. That's all you gotta do. Don't be scared. This isn't waste. Clean your seat. If it's dry, that dirt just brushes right off. Oop, that's a beetle. Beetles make these little tiny marks like that. Did you guess what made that other mark yet? Did you? Did you? If you did, leave it in the comments down there in the bottoms. All right, guys. Have you figured it out yet? Have you? Hmm? What made those little marks right there? See those little toofus? The little toofus marks? Right here? Toofus? Two toofus in the front? That Screw it! Anyway, he didn't do no harm. He needs to eat too. We can trim that part off. On these right here, I didn't really, I picked it to show you this side. Can you see the difference between that one? Oh, let me get my fat fingers out of the way. That sponge there and that sponge there. And let me clean this up a little bit. I generally don't bother cleaning these up except for getting loose dirt off of it. Um, mainly because this sponge right here, you don't want to eat that. That stuff right there, yeah, that right there. That, that's gonna be okay if you cook it right away. Even dehydrated, once it's dried out, as long as there's no wormy dermies in there, which there's not, and I'll show you why. Because you can see that's a beautiful, nice sponge. And this here has pockies and dirt and stuff like that in it. This has got worms. If you get this off soon enough, it won't get up into the cap. And you can still eat the cap. You just gotta get this part off. Here's what you gotta do. Peel it. Check that out. Peel it. Check that out. Peel it. Check that out. And peel it. Voila! Okay, let's check out the stalk on this one. First thing I'll do when uh, usually they're that gone is I'm just going to go ahead and cut this all, all off. And the reason is, you see that right there? The worms got to it. There's a difference. See that? See that? So, stock a no good. Uh, now, sometimes you can get them before they've gone all the way up the stock, but generally when they're looking like that brown, yeah, see, it's all the way. They went all the way. Yep. And all we gotta do, cut that little part out. Brushing off. A little more in there, but we'll clean it up. And uh, yeah, all that's edible. Just shave that part off, clean it up. Again, I'll show you on this one. Sponge, see that right in there? That's beetles, beetles are eating that. There's probably some uh, mushroom larva, fly larva they call them that's in there. So we're gonna peel all that off. And uh, But let's check the stem first. Ah, look at that. Stem's pretty good. There's a little bit of a spot there. All you gotta do is see how far it goes and uh, trim it out. Now what I'll do is I will cut the stem off here. Because that's all good. And peel off the sponge. Look at that. You can get the dark spots off if you want to. Don't have to. Beautiful. Oh man, you guys almost let me forget. We gotta weigh these babies up. <laughs> Right. We want pounds and ounces. Now I know this bowl weighs 10 ounces. We can't tear it because it's full of shroomies. Let's check it out. Oh, well, oh, real quick. Up, oh, up. Oh. You didn't see that. Take a guess. How much we got? Okay. Take, 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 take a guess how much we got here. Plus those. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Uh, can you see it? Can, can, can you see it? Three pounds, 14 ounces, minus 10, so, so, oh, 
No, oh, we got more guys. Mm -hmm. Boy, I hope you're seeing this. There we go. Oh, there's more. We forgot our kings. Alright, I think you can see that. Can we get the kings on there? We can get a final weight. Da -da 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 -da. Holy Moses, almost five pounds. Minus ten ounces. All right, Nobis. We got a hot cup of tea. We got some mushrooms we got to finish cleaning up here. Get them on the racks in the dehydrator, because like I said, rain's coming. Weatherman said. Hopefully he's wrong. Come on, train. We're trying to make a movie here. But it's a blessing, too, because that brings more mushrooms. But while we're doing all this, we're going to be watching one of the greatest YouTube channels I know that's out there. She is the Fajizzle of the Alaska Zizzle. One of our friends that's a Nomi. Alone in remote Alaska. Alone and I got a video coming up here in the next couple of weeks, maybe a month or so. Depends on when I get my part done, she gets her part done. Fun fun. All right, let's see what she's up to now. Ooh, Columbia Glacier Cruise. That'll be fun to watch. Musical intro. Here we go. We'll leave a link in the description. Please go check her out. Okay, we got a bit of a mess to clean up, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. We're gonna take a nap, and then when we get up, we got a few things to do, and then we'll make some dinner. This is a catch clean cook after all. What's a catch clean cook if you don't cook? Stick around. It's gonna be yummy. We're back. Guess what? Check it out, check it out, check it out. We got even more mushrooms. Oh my goodness gracious. Whatever are we gonna do? I know. We're gonna cook something. But before we do that, I gotta get these cleaned up. Figure out which ones I want to use because that's way too much for cooking for one little Nomi. Alright, one big Nomi. So we're gonna get these cleaned up, select which ones we want to throw in our pot for dinner. And uh oh, I also spy out of my my, my little eye. You can't see it, but I, I saw them with it. Was out hunting mushrooms and the kings are slowing down. But these babies right here, these are gypsies. <laughs> Some nice young ones. They're gonna go in the pot with us. And another Rasula. Well, I know it's another one because I didn't tell you yet. Just over there on the. Yeah. All right, let's get these picked and get to cooking. All right, Nomies. Now we can clean all these up because we're back with some beautiful gypsies. Oh. And the winners are. Voila! You know what they are, do you? Well, some of them you should if you watch the rest of the video. All right, real quick, what am I adding to the pile for dinner tonight other than what you guys saw before? We have our kings, we have our lemons, those you already know. These beautiful yellow ones right here. Are in the Rasula family. Do a quick ID on those. See how bright and beautiful yellow they are. White gill structure. Oh, check this out. This blade of grass grew through. No, actually, the mushroom grew around the blade of grass. That's it. Look at that slit right there. Piece of grass. Check that out. <laughs> The other one we have in our Rasula family is this one, which is a green, can be gray. Again, white gill structure. This one just hasn't opened up like those yet. But you'll notice too, these will be sort of like sticky tops. Could be like shiny too. So that's what you want to look for. And then these little beauties right here that I spied out of the corner of my eye. This is a gypsy mushroom. It is a veiled mushroom. It is a gilled mushroom. And you can tell that it had a veil even after the veil is gone. See this one right here? The veil is still there. 
This one, the veil's gone. That's where it was attached to there. And once it opens up, it loses the veil. But you're looking at tan gills, tan top. The bigger they get, they'll start cracking around the edge and this will get a little nipply. This one's a little older, I'll show you. You can identify it by the veil. You see the stalk, it gets a little bit bulbous at the bottom. Not too bulbous, just enough bulbous. And uh, yeah, nice tan top. It'll get a little wrinkly and cracked the bigger it gets. And I wouldn't pick them to eat any bigger than this. That's a good size right there. So these are gonna get cleaned up and cut up and sliced up and diced up to put in the pot. But we need something else to go with them. And we're gonna find that in the garden. And since the sun's going down, let's real quick run over there. Okay, here we are. Yep, we need a fresh onion. Not all of these, in fact, most of these aren't ready yet. Let's do a real quick once over on how to find out if a onion's ready to pick yet. This one right here, still growing, standing tall and proud, withstanding the storms. These right here, as they stop growing, the stalks will fall over. They'll stay green, but you'll see it's still pretty fresh. Oh, I better get that grass out of it. There we go. Still pretty fresh looking. So let's see if we got any that are readier here. This one's close. The stalk is falling down and they're starting to turn. What you want to look for is when these start turning yellow and brown. Um, and this area right here starts turning like you see them in the store, then they're ready. That one's almost ready, that one's almost ready. Mm. Ooh, de -de -de -de. There we go. There's a prime specimen for tonight. Not too big, but she'll do. We better take one more. They're not pretty big. Alright, back to the kitchen. All right, Nomi's the moment you've all been waiting for. What are we gonna need to make dinner? Ah, first, we need a cup of. Then we need a big old pan. Now, tell you what we're gonna do here. I haven't told you what we're making yet. If you can guess, you do it down to bottoms. Yeah, yeah, down there, somewhere down there. You, know, you gotta click something, and something shrinks, and then words come up, and you gotta say something. When you figure it out, depending on which ingredient we're at. Let us know. Alright, besides a big old pan and a cup of. The piece de resistance. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five mushroom medley. <laughs> Remember these? Got them out of the garden. Da -da 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 -da. Gonna need a jar of mousse. Have you guessed yet? And we're gonna need some time. He's on our side. Yes, it is. Actually, it's going to be in the pot. If we're going to use salt, I might as well put some flavor in it. Garlic and onion. Dash of pepper, dash of pepper. Actually, this is pretty cool. <laughs> yep. Now, you can use a bouillon, but I like this stuff a little bit better. Can you see it without the glare, hopefully? This is a uh, better than bouillon. It's beef-based stuff. It's real stuff, real good stuff. Good shelf life. Yum. One teaspoon equals one bouillon cube or one can of broth. Smart needs some wine. Well, we do need some wine. All right, have you, who's guessed it? Who's guessed it yet? On the kitchen bouquet, you know? Do you know? Getting close to the end. Then hurry up. All right. If you don't get it on this one, how about some uh, cream of mushroom? All right, here's the giveaway. If you haven't guessed yet, sour cream. We've got a mushroom medley mousse stroganoff going on. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, normally nomenclatures. We're gonna turn up the heat. And warm it up. Not too high. Yes, sip. Now I'm not gonna put any oil in this pan or anything right now. I'm just gonna throw the mushrooms in here for a minute or two on low. And the reason that is is because mushrooms are about 80 to 90 percent water so if you can get that water out of there then anything else you put in the pot goes into mushrooms 
and you got the mushroom flavor and whatever's in there, and because they're, they're like little sponges, people. Sponges, I tell you. Anyway, so we're gonna let that sizzle just for a little bit, and then we'll throw in some oil. Oh, and some butter. I almost lost one. All right, while those are drying out a little bit, I'll slice up some onions here. Let's talk a second about nutrition. Yeah, nutritional facts. Yes, beliefs have a lot of nutrition. Some really good stuff, folks. I want to start li ooh, listing it over here somewhere. I'll put it, yeah, somewhere. And uh, we'll talk about that here for a second. Well, I cut the We got fiber and protein, people. Selenium, magnesium, zinc, copper, vitamins D, C, and B. I'm going to julienne this here because I like the way juliennes look in this particular recipe. These three I can't pronounce. And flavonoid. All right, I don't know if you can see here, but there's some water. See that? Water coming out of this. That's good. Because once that, that water comes out, more flavor can go in. Now, if you see a bug flying through, I don't have bugs in my house. I'm actually outside. Because it's a beautiful night. I just watched the sunset. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, I'm gonna part the seeds here like Moses. Keep them up for a second. Because anything I put in here right now, these mushrooms are gonna let a suck up. And we need some oil. I know that looks like quite a bit, but like I said, they're gonna be sucking it up. Off of that. Ah, there you go. Now you want to do this nice and slow, so take your time, people. Enjoy the moment with the cuppa. Do you hear that? Do you smell there, there. Do you smell it? Oh, I wish you could. Well, there's still a little bit of water in there. That'll evaporate out. Onion juices will go into the mushroom. The steam coming off of that. The aroma. Ooh, that smell. Can you smell that smell? No, you can't. Sorry. Come visit, you could. Being 80% water, these mushrooms will shrink down to nothing. But that's all right. Let me have a little more magic. There's all good. That butter's going to help everything brown up real good. Crank it up. Not too much. Do, do you see what's going on in here? You see all that browning goodness? Just been about 10 minutes. Not too high, not too low. And uh, yeah. We got about five or 10 to go. Come on, people. We got caramelizing going on here. Flavor. Just look at it. All right, guys, there you go. Look at that. Onions caramelized beautifully. Mushrooms caramelized beautifully. Oh. 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 That was a good time to add some time. Good time. Because <laughs> you know what? Time is on my side. <laughs> For you to add the time now is because all them oils and butters and stuff in there, they'll bring out all the flavor and aromas. Mm. Mm. Now is the perfect time to deglaze that pan. That's going to soak into the mushrooms and everything. Oh my goodness, it's going to be good. I do want to add a little garlic to this. I'm going to do garlic salt. I'm going to skip the onion salt because I think it's, yeah, there we go. So with the uh, butter and stuff in there, that's more than enough salt. And the good stuff. Now there's still stuff in there. Don't, don't waste that. 
What we are going to do is uh, take some of this, put it in the can. Not that much. Half teaspoon. Good quarter, maybe. All right, what I do is I put some hot water in there with that better than bouillon. Get all that goodness out of there. Mix that in really good. Coming together. You want to keep this really low. I won't burn nothing. Now I did tell you that it's a five mushroom medley. Well, I fibbered to you guys. We're gonna add number six. What are these? Well, these are our chanterelles left over from last year. That's about as much as we got left in our jar. And in about a week or two, in fact, they might be now, coming up in the swamp. Just want to fill this thing back up. Anyway, these are flavor, just flavor bombs. I like to think they're on the same lines as that bouillon I put in there, or better than bouillon. In fact, these are better than better than bouillon. Better than better bouillon, even. Yeah, that's the ticket. Reason I say that is because most mushrooms, especially after they've been dehydrated, it's really what brings their flavor out because you got to get that water out of there to concentrate all those flavors in there. And then uh, once you do, oh my goodness gracious, and especially these chanterelles, they were nice and dry in that jar. I put them in a little bit of hot water, I, just, I think I showed you, or you saw maybe. Yeah. Oh. Moose. Now I'm going to bring this back up to a low simmer, hold it there for about 15 20 minutes, reduce this sauce and all that goodness. By about 25 percent. Oopsie doodle. <laughs> yeah, I like pepper. And the batteries are getting low on this thing. Good enough. Now, guys, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this stuff. Let's try and get it out of the glare for you. Kitchen bouquet. It is a browning and seasoning sauce. Don't need much. I'm not sure what's in it. Well, I am sure there's goodness in here. A little bit. A uh, little bit more. You like brown gravy? You want to put a dash of that stuff in there? Man, look at it. See how it turns out nice and nice and dark? <laughs> I did forget to mention in the what do I need? I need some noodle yolk. I love these dumpling no yolks. If I had the time and I had the patience, I'd make them fresh, homemade. In fact, I should do that for you guys. But until then, these work. Better get them on the burrow. So by the time these are done, that'll be simmered down perfectly. All right, guys, that's nice and bubbly and reduced down after about 10 minutes. I'm a noodle doodle doodle doodle. Time for some sour cream. Take two. Time for some sour cream. Yeah, about that. Now mix that in real good. Time for the noodles. Now I've cooked these for about 10 minutes. Anyway, like I said, I cooked these for about 10 minutes. The package said 12 to 14. The reason I did 10 is because you want them al dente a little bit. Because if they're al dente when they go into here, they soak all that stuff up. Does that not look phenomenal? Let that set for a little while. It'll be even better tomorrow. Okay, here we go, Nomies. Five, oh, oh, six. Mushroom, moose stroganoff. Mm. We're going in. Mm. Ready? Get your... Mm. 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 Until next time. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. I'm a nomi, he's a nomi, she's a nomi, you're a nomi, wouldn't you like to be a nomi? Put your comment down on the bottom. Click the subscribe down on the bottom. Click the like button down on the bottom. Or make a comment down on the bottom. Peace out.